If you own an Insta360 X5 and you pair it with either the GPS Action Remote or the GPS Preview Remote, not only will you have a remote control for your X5, but you'll also be able to add GPS stats to your footage, including your current speed, your route, your coordinates, and a whole lot more. So let's check it out and see how it works and how well it works. Hello and welcome. Today's video is focused on adding GPS stats to your Insta360 recordings. And although our main focus is on the new X5, pretty much everything we're going to cover today will also apply if you have an older model, an X4, X3, or even an X2, as long as you have a compatible GPS remote. Now, when it comes to the X5, Insta360 offers two different remotes which have GPS capability. You have the GPS Action Remote and the GPS Preview Remote. Now, today's video is not about how to connect them and operate them together with the X5. I recently posted a couple of videos which cover those topics in great detail. There is this one for the Action Remote and this one for the Preview Remote. Today's video is focused on GPS performance. We're going to look at how to capture the GPS data, how to add the stats to your videos in both the Insta360 Studio and the Insta360 app, and we'll also do a little bit of testing along the way. So there's a lot to cover, so as usual I'll place the chapters up here and on the video timeline, but first this. Before we continue with today's video, a quick disclaimer. This video is not sponsored, paid for, or influenced in any way. I purchased all of the equipment with my own money, and the opinions are entirely my own. Now, I do include links to the featured products as well as my recording equipment. These may appear throughout the video and in the video description. If you purchase using these links, I may make a commission, and this is what helps fund the channel. But rest assured, there is no price disadvantage to you, you are getting the best price I can find. Alternatively, if you want to support the channel, you could follow this link and buy me a coffee. And of course, if you enjoyed today's video, please remember to hit the like button and consider subscribing to the channel for a lot more similar content. So, back to the video. So as far as setup is concerned, there really isn't much to it. Once your remote is connected to your camera, anytime you hit the record button, the remote will capture GPS data and embed it in your video. It's as simple as that. Well, almost. One important point to keep in mind is that whenever you start up the system and get ready to record, before you hit that record button, make sure that the remote has a GPS signal lock. If you start the recording before GPS is fully acquired, you will not get GPS stats in your video. GPS acquisition time can vary drastically from just a few seconds to even a couple of minutes, and will vary depending on where you are and what kind of view you have to the sky. I tried to do some testing on this, but the acquisition time was just too inconsistent. So regardless of which remote you are using, be sure to keep an eye on that GPS status at the top of the screen, and make sure you have a GPS signal fully acquired before you hit the record button. Keep in mind also that in order to maintain a good GPS signal, the remote must have good visibility to the sky. If you are in a built-up area with lots of tall buildings or a densely forested area, you may encounter signal dropouts. If you are inside a building, you are highly unlikely to get a GPS signal at all. And even if you have the remote inside a vehicle, you may occasionally encounter signal issues. But assuming you have your remote connected and a good GPS signal, as I said, anytime you hit that record button, it will automatically record the GPS data and embed it in your video. And based on my testing, that is true regardless of which recording mode you are using, whether you're using standard video, pure video, InstaFrame, and so on, you will have GPS data available. So now you've made your recordings, you have your GPS data embedded in your videos. Let's now take a look at how to access and use that information. So let's start out adding GPS stats using the Insta360 Studio. So I have my file loaded, and as you can see at the bottom here, I have already done some editing but you can add GPS stats at any point during your editing process. 
Also, it's possible to add GPS stats with the playback running. But for the sake of this tutorial, in order to be less distracting, I decided to pause the playback. Now, the way we add GPS stats is to head over to the stitching panel on the right hand side where there are various editing options, including this one called stats. Now, if for any reason you do not see this option, it means one of two things. Either your recording was not done using a GPS remote, or if it was, your GPS remote did not have a GPS lock prior to you hitting the record button. If we click on stats, you can see there are various options here. We have some style templates at the top, data switch in the middle where you can select which GPS elements you want included on your video, and then some adjustment options at the bottom. Let's start out with the middle section where you can see the different elements that you can include. We have acceleration, tilt angle, date and time, total distance covered, current altitude, current pace, the route, which shows the complete route from the start to the finish of the video and your progress, the gradient, your current speed, and what is labeled direction, but probably should be labeled coordinates. So for my video, I'm going to select speed, the route, the distance, and the coordinates. Now, as you can see, these are currently presented in a certain style and that is determined by the style template. Currently we have a BMW motorbike type style. We can choose between energy, speed, rhythm, classic, cool, racing, futuristic, cyber, simple, and dynamic. I'm going to choose the classic style. So having selected my style and the elements I want displayed at the bottom of the page, we can also make adjustments. You can adjust the size of the elements. You can adjust the opacity of the elements. You can rotate them. You can choose between metric or imperial. And you can turn vignetting off or on. You can also adjust each element individually. So if I click on an element to select it, I can move it to any location on the screen. I can alter its size. And I can also alter its rotation. If at any point you decide you're not happy with the changes you've made, you can also reset everything to the default for that style. So having designed my stats display the way I want it, let's check it out. And one final point here, if you want to save your customizations and use them in a future project, you can save the preset assign it a name, and when editing the GPS data for your next project, you can simply select from your available presets. Adding GPS stats in the Insta360 smartphone app is pretty similar, but the way you access the GPS stats is, let's just say, not exactly intuitive. Having loaded your video, you're going to click on the keyframes option on the left hand side, then select the arrow at the bottom left of the screen. Next, click on Edit, that's the scissors icon. 
and if you scroll across you'll find the stats option. Similar to what we saw in the Insta360 Studio, here you can select which elements you want to display and which style you would like them displayed in. You can select between Imperial and Metric. You can reposition and resize individual elements on the screen. And you'll notice there aren't quite as many options available as in the studio. In order to do some testing, I mounted the X5 recording my car speedometer, starting with the preview remote. Overall, I think it did a good job of tracking the current position and speed. And in fact, you can clearly see that it is more responsive than my car speedometer. It did seem to struggle a bit with the very low speeds, but when you think about how a GPS system works, this is probably not surprising. When it comes to the action remote, here too the overall accuracy seems pretty good, which you can see if you follow the route and the coordinates. If you compare the speeds however, you can see it's not quite as responsive, sometimes tracking ahead and sometimes behind. So these two remotes are not the only options when it comes to adding GPS data to your Insta360 videos. You can also use a smartphone or even an Apple Watch, but note that using either of those has some pretty significant complications and limitations. So for my money, these are definitely the preferred options. Now there are also some aftermarket GPS remotes from other vendors, but I have yet to test these out. If there is an interest in that, let me know through the comments and I'll be glad to acquire one and do some further testing. So that wraps it up for another video. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed today's video, please remember to hit that like button and consider subscribing to the channel for a lot more similar content. If you have any questions, any comments, if you want to share your experience or make suggestions for future videos, please drop those into the comments section. Otherwise, thanks again for watching.